I think Tony saw that Vegas was very different as a city and probably a lot more uh, accepting of some of those what would be considered wild ideas. Those wild ideas leading to the revitalization of downtown Las Vegas. And this month marks three years since former Zappo CEO Tony Shea died in a fire. And tonight, with the help of his friends and court documents, our 8 News Now investigators are piecing together his final months alive. Shea's downward spiral and drug misuse dotted with lofty business transactions deals his estate are now questioning. 8 News Now investigator David Charns with this exclusive interview from Shea's inner circle. David. Fred Denise, we combed through 2,000 pages of documents Shea's estate submitted as part of a lawsuit over a contract he signed in the months before his death. Even though his health was rapidly declining, Shea con continued to spend millions and millions in business deals. His friends say the Tony they knew was in no mental or physical state to do that. I think one of the hardest things for me uh, outside of losing Tony was the recognition that money is a powerful motivator. When you look at pictures of Tony Shea, this is one of my favorite photos of the two of us. There's often a long red beard right there too. You were his employee. Yes. Yeah. And you became a very good friend. Yeah, through the years, yes. Tyler Williams first met his boss as a customer service agent at Zappos in 2011. He would leave the company a decade later as director of brand experience, but his real role was friend. It was inspirational. It was let's solve real world problems. Let's let's help make a better place for people to work and live. But by late 2019, the methodical multimillionaire was marching toward disaster. In the conversations that I was having with him, it was like I couldn't pull him back into reality. Um, it was super scary. That reality clouded by ketamine an anesthetic causing hallucinations. Friends say Shea began snorting the powder, and by early 2020, he was living here in Park City, Utah. Those in and around his inner circle coming to Williams about what they saw. And I think generally most people were concerned about his reputation around that time. Shea entered rehab in Utah that February. Documents the News Now investigators reviewed show doctors said he was manic and delusional. Shea believed ketamine was, quote, expanding his cognitive, physical, and spiritual capabilities, including his ability to grow two inches. After a two-week stay, Shea asked Williams for a list of his concerning behavior. When he was saying these things to you, what was going through your mind? It's the compounding effect of one of those things might be, okay, you think you can run a marathon without training, but it's all of those things combined of, I'm transcending human consciousness, I can see the matrix, I can grow myself with just my brain, um, I, I don't need, um, I can heal people, you know, these types of things that he was saying all combined just definitely set off every alarm inside of me that um, my friend's not okay. Shea stayed secluded in Park City at the start of the COVID pandemic. Friends say he believed he could recycle his urine and manifest water. Is it fair to say the Tony Shea you knew when you were working with him in Zappos and the Tony Shea you saw in Park City were different people? complete opposite of each other. The turning point for Williams came on a bus trip that June. And he walks on the bus in his underwear with like a box of crayons and post-it notes. At what point did you realize the emperor had no clothes? That bus trip where he had a complete psychotic break right in front of his friends, um, we all knew in that moment he's not just not okay, he's completely out of his mind. Friends found Shea in the bus's bathroom, spreading feces on himself in an attempt to, quote, reabsorb minerals. Once back in Park City, Shea flooded his home and held two women hostage until officers took him to the hospital. There, an emergency room physician diagnosed him with a, quote, altered mental status. Writing officers felt that they needed to bring him directly to the emergency department to get the additional help because they did not feel like he was safe at home taking care of himself and his altered state. Some people were calling him, he's in a funk. You know, he's just depressed or he's, he needs something that'll pull him out of this depression or the self-destructive behavior. And then you had a new group of people that were forming that 
We're really interested in the financial gains. Williams later sent a text message to the person he believed was supplying Shea with ketamine in an attempt to stop the flow. And I said, hey, please don't, whatever you do, Tony is in, you know, just had a psychotic break. Um, please don't give him ketamine, whatever you do, don't give him ketamine. That person showed Tony that text message. Shea then responded, cutting him off. And do you remember what that text said? Yeah, when you started talking about me behind my back. The message goes on for several minutes, an incoherent stream of consciousness that then... You are all back from Montana for a trip that I paid for half of you. ...was silenced. Hundreds of people that used to uh, talk to me regularly, on a regular basis, when Tony told them that I was no longer to be communicated with, um, just immediately stopped talking to me, immediately. Tony Shea would stop misusing ketamine, but he would turned to another drug. Tomorrow night here at 6 o'clock, his rapid decline before that fire took his life. I'm David Charns, 8 News Now. The 8 News Now investigators reached out to lawyers in the civil case where these new documents were filed and did not receive a response. A judge did rule in that person's favor in part of the lawsuit, but no person faces any criminal charges related to Shea's decline or his death.